Hello everyone, it's been quite a while since my last video and I know a lot of people are asking for how to do forge mods, a ton of people actually and uh, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and go through this and hopefully uh, I'll take some people will take some interest in it. Thanks. So this process is very very similar to creating a regular Minecraft server. The only things that are different are creating a mods folder um, they're importing the mods from, you know, mod developers and actually downloading a, uh, a Forge server and running that instead of a regular vanilla server. And it's really easy. We're going to go through it. And so let's just start off by obviously heading to the top left of your Google Cloud platform, heading down to Compute Engine, and let's create a virtual machine. So you put in the name. Put in the location you want it to be in. For my instance, I'm just going to do this one. And then machine type. So this is very important when you want your, I guess, specifications of your server. So if you're running a very dedicated server, you're going to want these ones. Obviously, if you're up to like a thousand plus, um, you know, it's all situational dependent. So do what you think is best. And testing. Testing is always good as well. So for this video, I'm just going to do something not not too insane, but it'll be okay. And this is a Debian base, so if we were to change this to, let's say, um, let's see, like Windows, Windows Server, it's going to bump up the price like almost $50 a month. So we are just going to stick with Debian because one, it is not that much harder to be honest, and it's, it's pretty simple. All right, it's just command line. Um, so... You can change this to SSD if you'd like. Minecraft doesn't really matter too much. There's not a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I'm just going to leave it for my, you know, my, my instance. Um, all right. So heading down to here, we need to actually change the uh, networking, which is the whole hardest part about this is, is doing the port forwarding and networking and, you know, doing the 25565 port, of course. So once you... Uh, expand this we're going to go down to over here to networking tab and for the network tabs just type in minecraft or you can type in whatever you want just remember this tag you're going to need it later on and for the network interfaces we're going to go ahead and create a new static internal ip and i'm just going to name this minecraft again you can oh, i already have a name like this actually yes so you would create one and you would click reserve i actually already have one set up um, let me see. Ah, here it is. So this would be your external IP. It would show up right here as soon as you click your primary and you reserve a static internal IP. And then it would show up down here, external IP. And you don't worry about port forwarding. We will do this later. And click done. So you're going to see that, yep, it's all set. And that's about it. And we're going to go ahead and click create. And I will be back once this is um, started up. So before we actually start working inside of the um, server and SSH into the start running commands, we are going to set up the network. So if you guys aren't aware, the fundamentals of running a public Minecraft server is port forwarding. Okay. So for port forwarding a Google Cloud Platform, it's very, very straightforward compared to going into the gateway of your network, home network, and risking, you know, getting DDoS and all this stuff. Obviously, Google Cloud, Pla Pla blah. Google Cloud Platform already comes with DDoS protection. Um, so you're going to go to the hamburger in the top left and head down to VPC network and firewall. And from here, we are going to create rules I actually already had this in so I will delete this and I will do it fresh but yes you are going to hit the firewall create a new firewall rule so for I'm just gonna name this Minecraft again network priority doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter specific target tag so the target tag is what you named and when you were creating the instance, that's what I said. You can name it whatever you want. Just remember it. So in my case, I said it as Minecraft. And IP ranges do not matter. Actually, this is going to be 0.0.0 .0 .0 slash 0. Slash 0. And ports. So TCP 25565. That's all you need. 
Very simple. That's how you port forward for your Minecraft server. And you are going to be done. And once that is created, we can actually head back to our compute engine. And we can connect to it. And then this is where we're actually going to start with our commands. Okay. And once your SSH client has loaded, now people get scared of command line. It, it's very straightforward. I like command line. It's kind of fun for me, but you may think I'm crazy. But anyways, so when you first get in, first thing you probably want to do is just get into sudo. So you're always running as your root commands. And uh, I recommend just going to the root directory so you don't have to, or so you can you easily know where anything is. Or you can create your Minecraft directory wherever you want. But in my case, I'm going to set it all the way back. So, once you create your Minecraft folder, you can create this anywhere you want. For me, I'm going to create it where I know where it is, which is right at the top. Uh, so, always when you get in here, you're going to want to do apt get update. And the reason I'm not putting sudo in the beginning is because I did sudo s. You don't have to do it anymore. So, update your, update your machine. Make sure everything's updated. I always like to do that. So, and then you're actually going to do app get install default jre. This is Java, and this is what's needed to actually run the server. And this is default Java runtime. So go ahead and get that installed. And then after this, we are going to actually install wget and unzip for this Debian instance. And screen as well. I will show you how to do that once this is done. And screen, what screen does is that, so with Google Cloud, how SSH works is when, if you run your server straight off of the, uh, the SSH server and you, you close this window, you actually close this window here, it'll actually stop the server. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a screen command and it's going to run it uh, on the background so you can exit out of it and it's still running once you leave. So let's get those things installed. Map git install. So we're gonna install screen. The next one is unzip. And the next one is wget. So install those three applications. Once you get those final things installed on your virtual machine, you're actually gonna head over to Minecraft Forge and pick whatever version you want and I, depends on what you want in latest or recommended it depends on the mods if some of your mods may go off the latest version and some may off may go off the recommended version so it's probably best that you check the version um, it probably won't matter a lot but sometimes it does happen where you get in a situation where forge is completely incompatible with the mod because either you're using the latest and they're back on the recommended one so i recommend checking your mods just to make sure everything works i've run into issues a few times so just make sure you keep that in mind. But I'm going to go ahead and do recommended. And you're going to actually do the installer. Make sure you're doing the installer. Hit the installer. And wait for this uh, add to pass. And you're going to pay attention to the top right and click skip. And then it's actually going to go ahead and download to your computer. Now you're going to head over to your downloads folder. And right click the link and copy the link. Okay. Very important. Copy the link. And this will make more sense in one second. You're going to go ahead and do wget. And you're going to copy or paste the uh, link address into here. So it's going to go ahead and download. And that is going to finish downloading. And what I like to do is actually rename this so you can actually read it and so you don't have to type all the numbers. So to do that, do this. And then I'm actually going to rename it just forge.jar so you can actually read it a lot better than this jarble up mess and now you want to actually install the server um, so to install the server the command is java hyphen jre and then it is forge because you're yep so forge.jar and then hyphen hyphen install server and the whole reason why i changed it to forge.jar was so i didn't have to type in the rest of this crap right here so much makes it much easier to actually be typing into the you know command line so Oh, no, it's not supposed to be JRE, it's supposed to be JAR, my bad. And that's going to go ahead and, it's going to go ahead and install. So once this is actually finished installing, we can head over and get some mods. 
Um, so a popular place to get mods is obviously CurseForge. Um, this is going to be the same concept of how to get these mods as certain other mods from other websites, but most of the mods are coming from CurseForge, so I will, I guess, run you through how the concept is to get it. So let's just pick three mods. So I'm going to do GEI, Mouse Tweaks, and Craft Tweaker. So to, the, our whole objective is to transfer the file into this virtual machine. Uh, so we can go ahead and click download of the mod we want. Oh, hold on a minute. This is the wrong version. I want to be going down here. So this is going to go ahead and download to my local machine. And the best way I like to do it is copying this link and then bringing it over to here. Uh, so we actually need to create a mods folder if there hasn't been one already, which doesn't look like there is. And we're going to cd into the mods folder and download this mod. So now the mod is in there. I'm not going to worry about having to change the name of this just because I'm probably never going to ever run a command off of it. So the second mod, download. Yep, correct version. And I'll do the third one while we're at it. So, copy the link, head here, W get it, it's downloaded. And third one, W get it, got it. All right, good. So now we have three mods, three mods. Now that we've got the mods in the mods folder, so we put in the three mods in the mods folder, we're going to back out one directory, which I was actually already in the mods folder. So to get out of there, you just cd and then a dot dot to go back one directory. Um, if you take a look at the what's in the actual Minecraft folder, you can see that this is the old file. We want to actually get rid of this. Forge.jar. This is the, ins remember how we were, uh, renamed it something that looked like this to this we don't want this anymore this is old we we're not going to do anything with this so we're actually going to remove this so and what we wanted to do is actually rename this i want to rename this just so it's easier to type so i'm actually just going to rename it to the exact same thing and overwrite the old deleted file make sure you delete this one first before you rename this probably good to do that okay now we can actually start up the server. And let's see, sorry, I'm just on my notepad. This is just a template, um, you know, thing. All these commands are gonna be in the uh, description below, so check that out. So the reason is I renamed this so it's easier to write. And I believe for this virtual machine, I actually only created 4,000 or four gigabytes, so I'm just gonna do three. 1,900 megabytes. And yep, that looks about right. So we're going to go ahead and start it. Aha, the EULA. So to edit the EULA and change for the false to true to accept the EULA, uh, you have to use a text editing program. And you can use whatever you want. I am going to use Vi, and I know some people will judge me for using Vi, but that's just the way I like to use it. So if you don't know how to do it, just follow my way. If you know how to do it another way, feel free to do whatever you know you want to do. Um, so we're going to do Vi, Eula.txt, and then you're going to press I on your keyboard and use the arrow keys to uh, go to the false or edit whatever you like to edit, and change false to true, press escape, Hold shift and do colon. So you need to put a colon and a W Q and press enter. The right stands for or the W stands for right and the Q stands for quit. So now that we if we go back into it, you can see that it is the same. So alright, so now we can actually start up the server. And I will be back once this is started up. Now that my server has finished starting up, we got the done. And we're gonna head over to the actual Minecraft client. Uh, you should obviously have the correct um, Forge version installed. This is the recommended one, which we downloaded earlier. 
and make sure that it's the same one running on your server as well. And you also want the same mods. All right, so I remember we downloaded the JEI, mouse tweaker, and craft tweaker. So head over to multiplayer, and to get the server, we should head back to our cloud platform and copy the external IP. Head back over to Minecraft, add the server, and give it a second. There we go. So we can log in. We'll have the stuff on the side. Good enough, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? All right, cool, working. And yep, so JEI is working. Something we could probably do to test it is mm, not sure. But regardless, we got it working. Mods are installed. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. I will be coming out with a Q&A video soon because I know there are lots of questions and I will address many of them, like how to use screen. Actually, I'll go in screen a little bit in detail after this, what I'm going to say. I'll go over screen, maybe how to F do FTP. Uh, many, many questions that a lot of people have asked. So, so to use screen, let's just... Uh, so yeah, so if I were to exit out of this right now, this wire window, it would actually close the server. And you, you, you're not going to want to have this up 24-7, because even if you shut down your computer, this is going to close. So what you want to do, stop the server. And to run, we want to run the server again. Uh, so we see this, and then the whole reason why we installed screen, screen. All right, so now it's going to run screen. And it's going to run it again. So now that we did screen, we can actually close out of this window and it would run in the background, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want because now it is a fully remote server that we can join at any time. And that's what we wanted. Uh, post your questions. Uh, the ones that obviously are going to be asked a lot will be answered. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments. And I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you guys for watching and see ya.